Hey everyone, uh, this is just a quick update on the uh, progress I'm making with the uh, create deck arc model uh, instruction for Nina's advanced sequencer. Um, it's part of the plugin called uh, Utilities for Astrophysics Mounts. I'm renaming that plugin, by the way. It's going to be called Astrophysics Tools after the next major release. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, just step through how um, the uh, instruction works in conjunction with Astrophysics Point Modeler, APPM, and how uh, the general like uh, configuration regime and um, the ways you would go about use, utilizing it within your, your sequences. Um, the, uh, um, for those who aren't familiar with what a deck arc model is, um, let me pull up Astrophysics Point Modeler here uh, with the default set down here in the declination and right ascension. The um, uh, point mapping, of course, lets you map uh, deviations in the expected or from the expected uh, in the sky. Air has refractive qualities. Uh, there's various uh, densities of air floating around up there um, from you know bubbles of cold air and hot air and stuff like that that refract light ever so slightly differently than um, surrounding air. And there's also things like flexure, mechanical flexure on air mounts and stuff like that. And the, the sky modeling is 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 meant to uh, basically survey that and uh, model it so that the um, APP, APCC can then adjust the uh, rate at which the mount tracks uh, on the fly uh, in, in accordance to the model. And so the mount might speed up a little bit, it might slow down a little bit, depending on what part of the sky it's in, based on what the model says. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's one way to get very accurate guiding. and. It's absolutely key to getting uh, doing um, unguided uh, exposures. So um, typically, uh, the sky and the entire sky has always been modeled. Um, and so what we see here is is an example of this. You see my local horizon here is is overlaid, and if we remove that, then you can see like how the whole hemisphere would look. Um, but the reality says I have trees and houses sur surround my observing site, and so this is the slice of sky that I see. Therefore, it's a slice of sky that we should really model. Um, uh, so that's the first kind of takeaway here is if you don't use horizon limits within APCC and thus in APPM, uh, then you're missing out. You, you should really put those in so you don't do more work than you have to. Um, so, uh, but here's a basic example of an all sky model and it literally is the whole sky uh we, the appm will take images at each one of these points and uh feed that into the model and uh and, and there you go but you know as astrophotographers we're usually concerned with one maybe two targets um rarely more than that um on a given night. So um, this whole sky model, if we were to model this whole sky and we're just imaging something, you know, around 60 degrees declination, then all this other time spent here modeling these parts of the sky that we'll never look at is time wasted. So why don't we, what if we could take all that time and just model the area of sky that we're going to be imaging? And that's what a deck arc model does. Um, it just models the area of the sky that um, you'll be imaging in. So as you can imagine, um, where as an all sky model is kind of like the shotgun approach, deck arc models are the surgical approach. But to be surgical, you need to have kind of a, a relationship, a working relationship between APPM and the sequencer. And so that's where my plugin comes in and this deck arc model creation uh, instruction for for Nina. So um, 
basically what it'll, what the instruction will do is when you start imaging a target, it'll say, ah, hi, you have a target. It's RA and DEC is this. I'll generate these parameters for APPM and send APPM off to create a model that's suitable for the target based on its RA and declination. And we'll load it into APCC and then commence with imaging the target um, with that model active. So, um, so it's on the fly model creation and um, completely automated. So you don't need to do anything manual to uh, to facilitate this process. It's basically you press go and Nina and and when it hits the create APPM, uh, the create deck arc model instruction, it it makes it, and then you know the rest of the sequence goes on. Whatever you're doing, uh, imaging a narrow band or whatever. So, um, a uh, so let's take a look at um, what a deck arc model might look like here in APCC. And so I'm just going to roughly approximate one. So. You know, let's say we're imaging something around 60 degrees, so we'll cut down there, there. Let me decrease the spacing and uh, decrease the, yeah, so, um, yeah. So say we're imaging something that's in this area of the sky and we're gonna image it towards the Western horizon. Well, this is what the deck arc, a deck arc model would roughly look like is, uh, you know, the, the target would be in between these two arcs of declination that are modeled. And, um, you know, we're going to image it from uh, this point westward. So, um, and by default, this, this plugin, this plugin will start image, uh, start the model creation at the current hour angle of the target. Um, the western extent of the arc is going to be whatever your horizon is. Uh, and that's why it's important to have these horizon limits in APCC. Um, yeah, yeah, you could ask the question, well, you know, if, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to image the, if Nina is going to image the target to the horizon anyway, why, why, you know, why can't Nina just calculate when that would be? And well, that's true, but there, there's other things that could end your, um, these other conditions that could end your imaging. And sometimes these conditions aren't predictable. So, uh, you know, while we know where we're going to start imaging the target, uh, we don't really know when we're going to image the target. Um, and so that's why we say, well, just image, just make a model to the farthest extent that you can which would be either your local horizon if you're using APC horizon limits or zero degrees on the horizon, which you don't want to do unless you live in Texas and you have a zero degree view of the sky all around. Plus, um, most people don't tend to image below 20 degrees or something like that anyway because of all the muck and murk in the atmosphere. So um, again, another shout out for using horizon limits in APCC. Anyway. So what the instruction will do is create a, an appropriate um, uh, set of parameters for APPM to make this kind of model. And we'll go over those now in Nina. So uh, first thing you might notice about the plugin is that the options area is now tabbed and the deck arc parameters has its own tab. And the knobs are, I think, kind of straightforward. Uh, we specify the quantity that we want to um, that we want to image, and uh, uh, you know, generally around two or three arcs. Um, if it's two arcs, the target will be um, somewhat centered in between the two arcs. If it's three arcs, then um, there will be a central arc that goes over or uh, is very close to the um, uh, the target, and then uh, one arc on either side. And all these arcs are separated by the specified declination arc separation. So all the arcs can be separated by two degrees. So 
uh, you'll have the central arc and then uh, a northerly and a southerly arc two degrees on either side of it, two degrees away on either side of it. Um, all right, point spacing uh, dictates the basically the, the density of points along the right ascension. So this says we're making a point every three degrees. Um, you know, you can make that less dense by saying a point every five degrees or more dense, a point every two degrees. It's, it's up to you. Of course, the more points you ask for, the longer the model will take to create. Um, and so those are the three main knobs there to adjust things with. Our angle lead-in, um, our angle is, uh, um, this is so by default, Nina will will start creating the arcs where the um, target is currently in the sky, and um, and so what you can do here is say, well, I want to uh, I want to start creating the arcs, um, uh, you know, a, f a little further east for whatever reason. Um, so you can specify that here in our angle lead in. So one, uh, you know. Uh, one tenth of an hour is one and a half degrees further east than the target's current position. So, I mean, if you want to, you can you can have it do a full hour if you want. Remember, one hour is 15 degrees of of sky. So, um, that's that's the divisor there. Um, point ordering. This is detailed in the Astrophysics Point Modeler or APPM uh, documentation. This governs how um, how the how the points are um, spread and how they're uh, in what order they're imaged in, and this may not have much um, importance when you're imaging um, farther away from the pole, more towards the celestial equator. It does have more bearing though. And more important when you when you get closer to imaging uh, to the pole, to the to, to the celestial poles, and um, uh, if we if we go back to our uh, astrophysics point modeler uh, point mapper uh, model over here, and let's expand this back out. We can see with the declination point ordering strategy that things are kind of sane around the the middle, uh, you know, farther away from the celestial pole. Once you get towards the celestial pole, that's quite some density there, and, um, and especially if you if you reduce the RA spacing, that gets a little more wild down here by the pole. And um, it vastly increases the um, the um, the number of points you have to model. So if you're imaging down like cl close to the pole, that's an awful lot of points to to, to deal with. So um, these other options here in point ordering strategy can alter that behavior. So if we switch that to equal RA density, um, the density of the um, of the points as you get closer to the celestial pole is adjusted so that you don't get that kind of harried mess. Um, the math is explained in the, Astro in the APPM document. Um, graduated is another form, so you can see the, the difference here between the two. Um, it's kind of like an in-between of equal RA density and, and just basic declination. And of course, um, ordering by hour angle is is a, another optimization that's aimed at domed setups. Um, so normally, what would what what APPM would do is uh, is image image these points by declination. So it go zit this this declination, then go to the next row, zit east to west, and zit east to west, um, and image those dots. Uh, our angle ordering strategy changes that so that it goes up by our angle. So instead of going east to west, it's going north to south. And um, and so the, the goal of this is to um, minimize dome rotation movements. And how much a dome rotates will depend on its on your dome geometry, 
um, yeah, how big the shutter slit is and your the field of view of your optics and so on and so forth. But um, uh, it's kind of a, a situational thing. It's having it do our angle is probably more important for these uh, these middle latitudes here um, in the sky. Um, then uh, it probably will be down here by the pole. Down here by the pole, the points are so dense and close together that you might want to do, you know, equal RA density instead or graduated uh, instead. You might get some more dome movements, but um, again, it's your call. Um, you kind of have to uh, pick out what works best for you there. Uh, but anyway, so that's what that setting is. And so it's a two-step setting. So uh, like I said, um, things get crazier by the poles. So you can pick a different um, or ordering uh, based on the proximity to the pole. So this says we'll do equal RA when we're within 35 degrees of the celestial pole. And uh, and so the, the, the ordering can be changed on uh, automatically if the target's within that zone. Um, so that's basically the parameters. So in, in practice, this will, um, this will, uh, um, work out like this. So, uh, we'll go to the sequencer. We've got a blank slate here and, uh, I've got a template here called deck arc test and deck arc test is basically just a DSO container with just the create deck arc model. Um, instruction in it. And by the way, there's three runtime options for this. There's do full arcs, and this basically says, I want to do a full, I want to ignore the, uh, the the current hour angle of the target. I want to do a full horizon to horizon arc modeling of the target's declination. Um, you know, default is off, obviously, for that. Manual start, that means uh, don't start APPM in automatic mode. So, so this will just launch APPM with the parameters loaded in it. You will still need to manually connect the camera and telescope and dome, um, and then manually start the model to keep it, you know, to go and then quit APPM. So it's, it's full manual mode. It, the only thing it does for you is start APPM and load the parameters in. And then uh, if you're running in automatic mode, you can create, you can keep APPM open uh, at the end. And, uh, you know, this kind of lets you review the model before um, the rest, you know, the rest of the sequence uh, progresses. So if you wanted to do that, you can do that there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pluck a target out of Stellarium here. We're going to pick one. Yellow line here is a meridian. Uh, East is on the left, west is on the right. We're looking south here. And so I'll pick, uh, yeah, what about what about the Flaming Star Nebula there? Seems good, all right? According to Stellarium, it has an hour angle of, and this is European, uh, Western hour angle is negative 12 to positive 12. European hour angle is 0 to 24. So we're at 24 hours, 0 being the meridian. Um, so we're going to go over to Framing Wizard, pull that out of um, Stellarium, and then we're just going to make a sequence out of it using that Descartes um, test template. Here it is loaded in. So we'll turn on manual start here and hit play. So the instructions running, it's generating the, the, the parameters and it started APPM. And um, oh, that was supposed to be on, but <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show points here. And um, and so we, we have our uh, three um, declination arcs in accordance with our parameters. Three arcs, two degrees apart, and RA every three degrees along those arcs. And uh, and so that's what will be modeled. Um, it's that straightforward. Um, so we can go in and pick. Um, let's see here. Well, let's let's first. Shut that down, clear that. 
and we can pick another target. And let's say we're just going to do a start, a late start on uh, Andromeda here. And pull that in. And uh, create our deck arc template and go. 25 points. Take us six, a little over six minutes to do. We'll look at it here. There we go. Um, what we can do is um, reset this progress, go over here to our plugin settings, and say, you know, I want to do two arcs uh, five degrees apart with RA spacing every two degrees. Uh, and I want to, I want to bump that back by four and a half degrees. So um, we'll do that. Go back to the sequencer, run our model again. Take a look at our points. And we've got our, we've, we've got our parameters reflected there, two arcs, the wide spacing between them, the Andromeda M110 is somewhere there in the middle. And um, we can verify that by saying, looking at our south uh, limit and our north limit. And then we see that our declination of our target here is at 41 and, uh, and three quarter um, uh, degrees. Uh, so right in between roughly and um, let's pick something closer to the pole to show the switch to different RA density. So we'll pick uh, this, what's this? The Jolly Roger cluster at declination 62. Let's pick something closer. Yeah, Mago. Get rid of this. Go to framing, pull it in. Create a model, let's go. And and let's see here. Here we go. Now we can see that the model was created with equal RA density per our instructions. If it if that was created with declination, that's what the model would look like there. Uh, so here's the difference: equal RA declination. So this is why that that this this um, polar proximity ordering session is our uh, 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 setting is 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 you know is very is useful. You aren't stuck to just declination for the entire sky. You can say you know within 35 degrees of the pole, I want to do equal RA, and you can do that. And this just illustrates that uh, that difference uh, between the two. So um, that's generally what the plugins direction is right now. Um, I'm doing a lot of work on the back end of it now to interact with a new API that APPM has. Um, and uh, one of the things that this will allow us to do is um, track the progress of the modeling um, with, within, the, within Nina. So we get some feedback. We know what point is being modeled and how many points there will be modeled and how long it'll take and all that stuff uh, will be available to Nina. Right now, Nina just um, assumes that when APPM uh, exits, the model was created and, um, you know, and everything went okay. Um, so um, with the new API, uh, API that APPM is, is, is getting, then, um, uh, we'll be able to have that feedback and um, you know in the imaging screen we have the uh, miniature sequencer and I'll be able to um, reflect that status and progression here in the in the in the sequencer so um, in the mini sequencer window so that's it um, and uh, I hope I didn't bore you too much but that's
uh, where we're headed with this plugin. And I uh, hope uh, once it's out, you guys find it useful. Thanks.